Hello everyone, it's Juan and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I would like to take some time and talk about the Kodak M38, which is a reusable film plastic camera, which is like the older sibling to the Kodak M35 camera, which I made a review a few weeks ago. So again, this video is not gonna be a full review, but rather a first impressions type of video, as well as a photo walk of the time that I tested this camera. Um, but yeah, if you'd like to hear my thoughts about this camera, then stick around and I hope you enjoy it. Like I said earlier, the Kodak M38 is pretty much the same as the Kodak M35 and the double film show camera, with the only difference being that it has a brighter flash. However, it's pretty much the same. It has a focal length of 31mm, a max aperture of f10, and a shutter speed of 1 1 20th of a second. And as you can see in here, they're all pretty much the same size. Um, but it's really just up to you whether which ones you think is the better looking one. <laughs> yeah, This becomes more prominent when you turn the cameras on their back because as you can see in here, they pretty much all have the same backside. The lower part of the cameras where you put the batteries in are all pretty much the same as well. So yeah, appearance-wise, it's all really up to you whether which one do you think is more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, I actually think that the double film show camera is still the best looking out of the three, but that's just a personal preference. I just like its matte finishing compared to the M38's smooth plastic. Like the other reusable film cameras, this camera is fully analog, however it does require one AAA battery for using the flash. And to use the flash, you just toggle this flash button over here, and wait for the red light to turn red. To load the camera with film, pull the film rewind crank up. and open the back side of the camera by pulling on its door lock. And then put your choice of film into the film chamber. I would recommend using anything that has an ISO of 400 and above, just so you can handle most of the lighting situations. Now pull on the film leader and hook it into the film take-up spool, and then use the film advance wheel to set it in place and then close the back door. Turn the film advance wheel a couple more times and take a couple more photos until you reach number one on the film counter and then you're ready to take actual photos. To take photos, do the same thing. Turn the film advanced wheel and then hit the shutter. And that's pretty much it. The camera focuses from 1 meter and beyond, so you don't really have to think too much about focusing. So a couple of weeks ago, I went back to my university's campus because I had an eye doctor appointment, and I thought that I might as well bring this camera and test it while I'm in the campus grounds. So I thought about taking photos of the empty university because right now it is closed, um, so I thought that might make for some really evocative photos that shows the effects of the pandemic. So here I was just going out of the parking lot and just walking towards the building where I'm supposed to go um, and I thought might as well take some photos of the places that I used to go to um, like this part over here, which has a Starbucks. I used to go here before when the campus was open, but yeah, this is where I usually get my morning coffee when I park and then head on to wherever I'm supposed to be. <laughs> Thank you. 
So in here I wanted to take a peek inside the Starbucks and take a photo because I saw that some light was entering through the windows and I thought that would make for a cool composition. I should have moved my selfie stick though where I'm placing the Insta360 because it ended up getting reflected on the panel and so it ended up in the photo which I kinda don't like. And here's what your photo would look like if you take it directly towards the sun. <laughs> it's not that good. And this public art installation over here is called the Spire. However, most people call it the Paperclip. Um, yeah, it was commissioned for the 1988 Olympics that happened here in Calgary. Here I just saw somebody sitting there wearing red, so I thought that would be a cool photo. So I'm skipping a bit here because I went for my eye appointment, but afterwards I went out the other side of the building, which is called Mac Hall, um, and so I just took this photo over there. So they're building this new library, which I think is pretty awesome. Here's a tip for when you're going on photo walks. Always make sure to turn around to see where you've been, because sometimes you can miss some opportunities just because you didn't turn around. So as I was walking, I noticed this red dress hanging in one of the trees, so I got a bit curious and went towards it. And I think it's for an art installation called the Red Dress Movement. So yeah, I took a photo of it with flash because it's backlit. Um, and I think the flash made the dress look brighter on the photo. Here I decided to go back inside Mac Hall just to see what is happening because this used to be where the students used to hang out 
Um, the food court was basically here, so most of the time we were here hanging out with friends and all. Um, but I wasn't really sure what was going on in it while the pandemic is happening. And it seems like a few students are still here hanging out, and some of the food places are actually still open. However, they did remove a lot of the sitting areas. Like, this area over here used to have tons of tables and chairs. And right now it's very empty. I guess this is what they've done to those chairs and tables. It's like the elephant graveyard from The Lion King. So I'm just gonna shut up for a bit now to let you see the rest of the photo walk. Okay, so one thing to keep an eye out when you're using this camera indoors is that you always have to check whether you still have enough light inside or if you don't. So in here, my eyes had adjusted to the dim lighting and I thought I still had enough light, but turns out I didn't. Yeah. And here, I'm not sure if the flash would have worked because the flash is only really good for 3 meters anyways. So yeah, keep that in mind.
So here is another landmark here at the University of Calgary and it's called the Screwdriver created by KDO. Um, and you can turn it around and reconfigure it however you want. Um, to some people, they say that turning it is good luck. To some people, they say it's bad luck. <laughs> I don't know. So I took a photo of these lockers as my last shot to illustrate the pincushion distortion that this camera has. So if you look at the corners, you can see that the lockers look a little bit bent. And yeah, most other film cameras has this too. I mean, film plastic cameras at least. So yeah, overall this camera really functions the same as the Kodak M35. Um, it's quite easy and fun to use and I would actually say that it's a little bit more beginner friendly than the Lomography Simple Use Film Camera. And I say that because the Kodak reusable film cameras alongside the Double Film Show cameras are all easy to load with new film uh, compared to the Simple Use Camera. Now, if you'd like to purchase one of these, um, you can pretty much go for any one you'd like. However, I do have a few ideas. For example, if you like using the flash more, then I would say go for the Kodak M38, just because at least on paper, um, they say that this has a brighter flash compared to the M35. If you'd like better product support, I would go for the Double Film Show Camera, just because Double Film has a better online presence compared to the company that makes the Kodak reusable film cameras. But again, the Kodak M35, M38, and Double Film Show Cameras are all pretty nice plastic reusable film cameras, and I believe you can't really go wrong with any one of them. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you got something from it. If you liked it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.